Hey guys, my name is Shai, and this is a video for any starseeds who want to know a little bit about what's currently going on with the GFL. <laughs> um, this is going to be a little out there, I think even for me, but I think if you watch my videos, you like out there, so I'm gonna go with it. <laughs> um, I am gonna get some cards. This will eventually be a tarot reading, but I do have um, just some messages. It's actually more of like a news update. That, that's how this really started. <laughs> so let me just do the preamble here. So I was setting out to make a completely different reading. I wanted to do a pick a card reading today, but then I literally opened my door <laughs> and just kind of looked outside and I got a transmission from my Zeta star family, right? I have this one Zeta contact who is actually blue skinned. He's a blue skinned Zeta and his skin, it's like more than blue. It's actually quite metallic and textured looking. Very hard to describe. <laughs> um, but anyway, he hangs out on a ship, you know, periodically around my house and he beams me, you know, him and his, his people, right? The, the crew, I guess, of the ship beam me energy. And it's always interesting receiving an energy transmission from a being who is so physical, so like us, um, such as the Zetas, right? Because if you're receiving an energy transmission from, you know, some very, very, very transcendent, non-physical spiritual being, it's just this swirling vortex that just kind of comes down through your crown, right? And it's very abstract and kind of passive. But when other physical beings like the Zetas and there are other um, you know civilizations and species that do this as well but when the Zetas want to beam energy at you they they literally have um, technology like machinery I, I have no idea how it works but it's like a little bit like a like a beam gun like a like a ray gun that they use and they point at you and beam energy down at you and they can do this through your walls but it doesn't work as well um, sometimes I get the transmission when I'm standing by the window and it, it's like really, really obvious. But if they can get you when you're outside and they beam it like through your third eye, um, it's very interesting. It's it's like receiving a, an almost instant radio transmission. It's like imagine if someone could shoot radio waves at you um, and give you like a zip file, right? So it's not like it's not like you're listening to a song or a message in linear time. They beam it at you and you get an instant download of a zip file and then it's your job to extract the file and kind of figure out what the message is so uh <laughs> so yeah i basically just opened my door and then my entire trajectory of my day changed because i received this transmission so i'm going to try to describe what this transmission from this one particular group of zetas is right and this one particular group of zetas I don't know, since he looks so different, then he's not like a tr like a traditional looking like gray Zeta. He's definitely Zeta and he's definitely like part of that, but he's some type of subgroup, right? Um anyway, so his message was specifically about the the GFL and I always get questions every time I talk about the GFL. So let me just try to preempt some of that and describe, you know, just for, the, I don't know who's tuning in, right, who who you might not know about the GFL. Um, and also there's the problem of language where everybody refers to the GFL as different things and you might understand them as something else, um, even though we're all kind of referring to the same thing. <laughs> so anyway, the GFL is the Galactic Federation of Light, also known by some as the Alliance of Worlds. There are other names as well. They're essentially, you can think of them as the the galaxy's united nations right they're this kind of loose collective of all different types of benevolent civilizations um but they're, they're like incredibly diverse right incredibly 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 diverse um and and really like an enormous collective of so many different types of beings they largely belong to, if you want to use the 12D system, I would say like 5, 6, and 7D. They're kind of like the middle managers of the universe <laughs> or our galaxy in that way. And they do just kind of, they're, they're, it's not about a hierarchy, right? It, they are a government. They are kind of like a governing collective, but they're not a hierarchy. Um, it's much more egalitarian um, based, uh, like, trying to be based in unity consciousness anyway um 
some people, some star seeds on Earth are deeply triggered by the GFL because, <laughs> and some uh, some star seeds assume because of because of they're triggered because because how triggered they are that the GFL is you know negative or bad or that they're here to control. Um, that's because, of course, just like any group of anything, just like any governing body, they're not perfect. And yes, they're sometimes have been and maybe even currently are um, corrupt elements, negative elements. And if you've had run-ins with corrupted or negative elements of the GFL in past lives or even in this life, <laughs> uh, then, you know, you have a legitimate reason to have a beef with them. And that that's where that trauma is coming from. So if you're triggered by the GFL, just know that by and large, uh, like if you had bad experiences with a small, uh, you know, like with the bad apple, right, with the bad apple, it's not all of them. Um, and really, for the most part, they are a really positive force for good in the galaxy. <sighs> They're also incredibly diverse. There's different, you know, different groups, different factions. It's not really that they fight, but they have very different views, right? All kinds of different views. It's not about getting everyone to agree. It's just about including more and more different types of consciousness, basically, and different types of civilizations. And yes, if you are listening to this, highly likely that you are also involved in the GFL somehow, right? Even if you think that there's no possible way that little old you could be in, like a member of the GFL, that's just your human mind <laughs> trying to make you feel small, right? It's like if you if you found this video and it's resonating right <laughs> it's highly likely that you know when you're asleep at night you go up to the ships right you you, you never remind you don't you don't necessarily remember any of this right but it's highly likely that you're popping in and out of different GFL meetings and that you're you know representing earth or that you're representing other groups of your star collectives your star families right and that you're involved in decisions that are being made and different things, right? Because why, why wouldn't you? Of course you are, right? That's, that's one of the reasons that you are here. So even if you think that's not you, it probably is you, especially if any of this is interesting or resonating with you. Uh, what else is important to know about the GFL? Okay, so what is currently going on, and that, that was the point of the transmission I received, is that the GFL um, is going through a wave of change, right? Um, and I keep, they keep saying it's, it's like it's a crisis, except it's not a crisis, right? It's like it's a crisis, except it's not a crisis. It's one of those things where... Um, I don't know, just imagine, you know, governments don't like change, right? Governments don't like needing to change. Um, even if it's a very benevolent, enlightened government, you can just imagine, right, that when the time, when it, when the time comes for a government to have to change, it's not going to like that, right? And it could feel like it's going through a crisis, um, especially if some of these beings, you, you can imagine they have been in, in, involved in the GFL for, you know, spans of time that don't even make sense in human years, right? We'll just say a very, very, very long time. And they've kind of been existing, um, maintaining the status quo for a very, very, very long time. And to those particular beings, even though they are maybe higher dimensional beings and very wise and enlightened in their own way, if, if they feel like they have to change, that's going to feel like a crisis to them. So even though this is not a crisis, it is simply evolution and change. For some beings, it can feel like a crisis. <laughs> um, the type of change that is happening is this. Okay, let me see if I can, if I can articulate this, if I can spit this out. <sighs> I just, let me pause for a sec. Okay, it's just tough to articulate this because they're showing it to me in like several different ways and I have to pick one way to start right so let me just start like this the GFL has been responsible for protecting earth right for protecting earth especially from negative extraterrestrial elements right from negative extra extraterrestrial elements they keep out some of the bad guys that would come here and cause havoc, right? Obviously, they don't keep all of them out, but they have been keeping 
some of them out, <laughs> right? Um, and they're showing me it's kind of like, we can imagine it like a firewall, like, you know, like a computer firewall, like an antivirus, right? Like a, a firewall for computers. It's kind of like this firewall around the planet that has been keeping out a lot of energy. Um, and the thing, but here's the thing, right? Here's the thing from the perspective of some of these beings in the GFL, they're kind of above the duality based thinking. So they're not necessarily thinking about good energy and bad energy, right? Or negative or positive energy. They're just thinking in terms of energy. Um, and that's also how this firewall around the earth has been working. It's just keeping energy out. <laughs> it's just keeping energy out. So yes, it is keeping things out that we would call bad energy or bad vibes or bad entities or negative entities or whatever it is keeping it has been keeping that energy out but it has equally been keeping out like the opposite energy so energy that we would call good or desirable or activating or enlightening you know ascension vibes it's also keeping those energies out so um, the GFL is basically sitting around um, and they're also all going through their own evolution right their own ascension process that like we're all evolving together right we're all evolving together so they're also feeling like it is time for them to change to do something new because it's like they're starting to see that maybe it's time to take the firewall down like around earth right maybe it's time to take the training wheels off of earth maybe it's time to stop protecting earth so much because maybe the human you know they're saying like the humans especially the star seeds right we have been complaining <laughs> so like we've been complaining on earth and we also go up uh, to gfl meetings and we complain there and we say we want more we're ready for more we want we, we're ready right we're ready like give us more you're holding us back right that's what we have been saying all of humanity like the human collective is saying this but like especially the star seeds we are saying this right we're saying like it's time um give us more take the training wheels off help us grow more right there, there's this cage we feel restricted we're ready for more we want to go like let's go so let's grow right let's go let's go let's make this happen we're tired of you know how things have been we're ready for like the next stage of growth right so we've been complaining and they're listening to us and they're basically considering how to give us what we want. Um, this presents a problem or, you know, problem, um, a challenge for us and it presents a problem or a challenge for them. The problem and the challenge for us is that if they like take down or modify this firewall, right, if they stop protecting us from... Like if they stop filtering out all of this energy, then okay, that's great because then we're going to get all of this um, like benevolent, positive ascension energy, right? But then that also exposes us to some of the energy that we wouldn't actually like, right? Um, because they're they're just saying, okay, we can take the firewall down, right? We can take the firewall down. It'd be like uninstalling the antivirus on your computer. Now you can just, which sometimes you need to do, right? Sometimes on your computer, you need to stop the antivirus so that you can install a good program that you want, right? Sometimes it's, it's like, it's, you know, nothing's ever perfect, right? Nothing is ever perfect. So they're going, okay, what if we take the firewall down? Um, what if we stop protecting you, right? What if we stop protecting you? And then, then, and they're saying we, they don't really want to do that because then all of this, you know, negative energy could come in. Um, so that's the problem that it presents for us, right? Like, are we ready to protect ourselves, right? Are, are we capable of that? Are we ready for that? And that's basically for us to decide, right? That's for us to decide. Um, like, are we ready essentially to take the bad with the good, right? We would open ourselves up to more, um, benevolent energy, but we'd also open ourselves up to more, you know, dubious energy, I'll call it, right? So we, we basically have to decide if we want that. And but this also, this is where this is a crisis for the GFL is that they kind of don't want to do this partially because then they would feel useless <laughs> right like if they I mean of course they have more things to do than just looking after earth but this is going along with a broader shift with the GFL where they're kind of looking at themselves going do we even need to exist do we still have an important role in the galaxy um because it's not it's not just earth right it's all of these different planets and in all of these different ways um this is I'm just like barely like <laughs> touching a fragment of the tip of the iceberg here right so this is happening on so many levels on such a broad scale that the gfl is kind of sitting around going like 
should like do we even need to exist right and for some of the beings who have really invested their long lives into this project of the GFL they're kind of feeling like well if if i if i'm not part of the GFL if the GFL is not necessary or important anymore then what am i going to do who who will i be right was it all <laughs> was it all for nothing or what do i do now and there can be this feeling of almost like an empty nest syndrome like the, you know how parents when when their chil- children leave home, right, they can feel like, oh, what do I do now, right? I, it's like, I got what I wanted. I did my job. I raised my children and they're going off into the world now. What do I do, right? Um, and of course, most parents work through that and they get to a phase of, oh, wow, now I can like live my life again, right? And I can return to myself and I can do this a whole new life trajectory available to me. So, you know, these individuals in the GFL are, you know, working through that phase in their, <laughs> through that phase in their journey, right? Um but it's like the GFL itself is having this crisis going, do we need to completely reimagine what it even means to be the GFL, right? Like what, how, how can we, what do we do now, right? How, how can we still assist? How can we still help the evolution of consciousness, right? How, like, what do we do now? What do we do now? And one other thing here is coming back to this, uh, like I had a little bit of, not really an argument with them, but I, I was kind of like, <laughs> Sometimes I sometimes I do argue with them <laughs> because they have such a different perspective and one of the big reasons that human star seed human star seeds why we are so important to be participating in the GFL is because we have the galactic star seed perspective and then we also have the human perspective. And so when the human perspective comes from someone like you or me, right? like a human star seed when, when the human perspective when we actually understand that and we present it to them it is incredibly powerful because then they go oh oh because sometimes they actually kind of write off the human perspective as going humans are stupid humans don't know what they want humans are they're just like children right we, we don't take their opinions very seriously because humans are just children but when you or me present the human perspective to the gfl they take it more seriously and because so one of our tasks is to essentially understand and articulate the human perspective and show why it is important and show why it is valid and show actually why the human perspective can can create an entirely new way of being one that is important for the whole galaxy even the whole universe so what i was kind of telling them and i'm not the only one saying this right this is just this was just my experience i was like okay why can't you just <laughs> allow the good energy in and deflect the bad energy like why does it have to be <laughs> why does it have to be firewall or no firewall and they were like oh well like we don't really look at it that way right we just see energy so we only they're, they're saying that they only <laughs> they are have how to get this right it's not exactly that they don't know but it's not typically what they do right they just typically look at everything as energy they just look at everything as energy so they're keeping out certain frequencies of energies and they don't really see it as their task to filter the energy they don't really see it as their job their responsibility or even their privilege like they almost feel like it's not my place they feel like it's not their place to decide what energy is good and what energy is bad so that's why they're like there's either a firewall or there's no firewall there's either protection or there's less protection in general and i was like well why can't you just turn the firewall into some kind of filter, right? Why can't you filter the energy? Why can't you just filter the energy and allow in more of the benevolent energy that we want and filter the negative energy that we don't want? I was like, why can't you just do that? That seems like the obvious solution, right? <laughs> like, you know, I was like, that's what we humans, that's what we do all of the time, right? Just like on our computers, we, we download stuff constantly all the time onto our computers, but we do our best to not, to filter out the bad programs, right? We, 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 we have our own computer firewalls, we have antivirus systems, right? And, and, you know, we also learn how to just not download, not click on the bad links, not open the bad attachments, right? I was like, this seems obvious to me. This is something that is obvious to humans. Just let the good in and do something else with the with the bad, right? Do something else with what we don't want. Um, and so they're kind of chewing on that right now going, hmm, how, how would we do this? How, how, would, how, how would we make this work? Um, so they're, they're re- actually, they're showing me taking the firewall and basically poking holes into it, turning those holes into funnels that would kind of 
scan for viruses, essentially, right? I'm using a lot of computer metaphors here because I think that's the best that's the best metaphor I have, right? Uh, you know how sometimes your computer or your phone will be like scanning for viruses, scanning the download for viruses to see if it's good to allow that in. And so they're showing me that, okay, they're thinking, okay, maybe we can do this, right? Maybe we can make these funnels, these funnels in the firewall to allow more benevolent energy in, but also kind of filter out more of the energy that we do not want. Um, but they're saying, of course, it's not ever perfect. It's not ever perfect. And they wouldn't even want it to be perfect because they have this view that like all energy needs to be given a chance, right? So it's like they would only want something to be like 99% perfect, just to give you an example, right? Because every energy needs to be given a chance. This is part of their like deeper philosophy of how the universe works, right? That that I think is probably a whole nother topic that I'm not going to get into, but they only want this filter to be about 99% perfect. So that is the current state of affairs um, in a nutshell, right? And you can, you, one thing here you were just invited to do is to think about how the, this situation that I just described, how this might be playing out in your personal life um, or just in human life in general, how you're seeing these themes play out everywhere because it's happening on multiple, multiple, multiple levels. Guys, <laughs> this card is enormous. I like, I'm like actually shaking. I don't, I'm like actually shaking. This card is the biggest piece of confirmation I could possibly have gotten for this message. This is the Three of Wands. This is one of those cards that I have a very personal connection with. And there's a few of you, like, I don't know, literally like a handful of you, maybe five or less. I don't know if you're watching this video, right? But there have been a few people that have had private readings for me over the years where this card has come up. And I, this card to me means that you are a member of the GFL. That's what this card means. Like I, ha there's a few cards that I have a very specific meaning for. That's like a personal meaning I have developed with the card that, you know, my guides have basically told me like this card means that right like and it's this particular card right and the three of wands not in other decks it's only the three of wands in this particular deck and I was thinking wouldn't it be incredible if this card came out in the reading but I was like well I'm not gonna count on that right there's like 79 cards in this deck right <laughs> what are the odds that this three of wands will come out but it did it's the first card out can't even deal so this card specifically means that you're a member of the GFL, right? And I know there's probably dozens of you watching this. <laughs> maybe over, maybe a hundred people will see this, right? Maybe two hundred over, over the years, right? You, you, you are a member of the GFL, right? And th for this card to come out like that, this is <laughs> ridiculous, insane confirmation for me to receive for this message. Because which is nice, because you know. I do hear myself talking from like a normal human perspective and it I make myself laugh because I know how I sound, <laughs> but it is shit like this that you just can't make up and that convinces me of everything, right? <sighs> okay, so I'm not even gonna draw any more cards from that deck. I'm just gonna get some Oracle cards just to like, just to see, right? Just to see. <sighs> just to be clear, when I said you are a member of the GFL, I didn't just mean those like five people that have had this card come up in previous readings. I just wanted to shout out to those people in particular because those people will know what I mean, right? If you're watching this and if you remember the reading I did for you and if you remember when this card came out, then you know, that's like a special synchronicity for you personally. Um, but for everyone else, everyone watching this, member of the GFL, right? Like if you're watching this and this is, if you're still watching this, there's no way you'd be watching this if you weren't, right? You would just, how would this ever come up in your field, right? How would you ever find this video on the internet? It's insane, right? Okay, <laughs> storm warning. 
storm warning. This is, this is the change that can seem like a crisis, but is not, right? The change that can seem like a crisis, but is not really a crisis. It's really a crisis of the ego, right? A crisis of the ego. The ego doesn't really want to change. The ego can actually be a little bit afraid of manifesting the change that you have so desired, right? It's like, you know, in this channel, right? We're we're all fringe people, right? We're here we are talking about aliens and the GFL and our lives on other planets and stuff like that. That's pretty fringe. Like that's pretty fucking fringe <laughs> in terms of where humanity is at right now, right? So, what would we do if we woke up tomorrow and found out that suddenly everyone believed in aliens because like aliens had like landed somewhere right? it, it would almost be like oh my god now now i'm not special right it, it, now i'm not on the fringe and it's it's and even though we'd be happy we'd be so happy right that aliens landed or, or something or that suddenly everyone believed in aliens because or at least a lot of people like more people right if this just became more common um you know we would be very happy but at the same time it's this feeling of I am so used to being on the fringe that I almost don't know what to do with myself if suddenly everybody else moves to my fringe. Does that make sense? I think you guys know exactly what I mean, <laughs> right? It, it's almost like, oh, well, like, then I'm not special anymore. Or, oh, what, like, what do I, what do, I do with myself now, <laughs> right? Because I, a lot of us, I think, are actually calibrated to being on the fringe. We're like, that's how we are. Like that is how our energy is. That is how, that is how we exist. That is how we are. It's like we really consider that to be part of our identity. And whether that really needs to be part of our identity is something for each and every one of us to consider personally. Um, but so when if we woke up one day and realized that like <laughs> to to you know to use like a crass phrase, right? If everybody else was suddenly caught up to us, if everyone else suddenly got on our level then where does that leave us, right? Like, what? then what do we do next? Because then we're uncomfortable. Because even though, even though I know all of us struggle with feelings of alienation and with feelings of not belonging, we're actually so used to that, that if suddenly we woke up and found out that we belonged, we like wouldn't even know what to do with that. It would almost like belonging is in and of itself could be alienating. <laughs> Almost like belonging in and of itself could be alienating. And it could make us feel like, now I don't know... Now I don't know. I don't know. What I don't know, right? It's this feeling of like confusion. I mean, that's how the GFL is feeling, right? That's how the GFL is feeling. And you you can tell, right? You can tell by like the phrases that come out here. Um, and, and it's like, you know, so we could be sitting around feeling like, you know, feeling these feelings. And then as soon as you speak them out loud, you realize, oh, well, it's all very silly. <laughs> it's all very silly. Like I'm going to be alienated because suddenly I belong or I'm going to be upset that suddenly I got what I wanted or I'm going to be uh, like disturbed because now everybody is on my level, right? Like you can, as soon as we say that, it sounds ridiculous. And, you know, so I think we're going to work through this fairly smoothly as long, and because I think most of us have already done a lot of work, you know, releasing unnecessary, no longer necessary ego constructs, right? So that's really what this is about here is we're pairing away some of our ego constructs that kind of hang on to this idea of being on the fringe, of trying to hang on to this idea of being the outcast. Um, even of, because, because we've attached to these ideas because we had to, right? We've existed on the fringe. We've existed as the outcast, for so long, we've existed on the outside looking in for so long, we've kind of forgotten how to belong. We've kind of forgotten how to be normal. <laughs> and we had to get okay. We had to get okay with it, right? And we had to learn to take pride even in being the outsider. And we had to learn to go, okay, I might be different, right? I might be so different. I might be really alienated. I might be really this outcast type of person. But, but I can find the good in that because that makes me special, right? And these were all important, like, these were all important ego, egoic constructs, right? They, they benefited us, they served us, they helped us, they helped us be on earth, they helped us stay alive. They helped us walk through life with our head held high when the whole world, when it felt like the whole world was against us, right? For lifetimes even, like living in this like outcast fringe type of state. So, 
it, like another another example here would be imagine if you've been so poor and struggling financially for so long and of course when you struggle financially everything in life is hard right it's not just finances when you're like truly truly on the financial edge right everything is so hard because if one single thing goes wrong you can't afford to pay for it now you're in a serious problem right and then imagine you win the lottery and you wake up and now you have millions of dollars and you're so happy and you're so grateful and you're so thankful and you're crying tears of joy. And that, but then you start to wonder, what do I even, what do I even do now? I don't have to work. <laughs> I can pay for anything that I want. What do I even do? And, and it's like this release of the struggle, release of the ego. It's, it's that type of thing. Um, and so I think there's just like a phase here where we as individuals and also the GFL itself is kind of going through this transitional phase where we learn to like, like, instead of looking at this going, oh, like, what do I do now? It's like, wow, I wonder what I'm going to do next, right? This is, <sighs> this feels like the ending of a cycle, but like, in a different way, right? In, in a different way, I know I talk a lot about like the ending of a cycle, right? It, that's always that always comes up. But this it feels like it's ending in a different way. It's like ending on a really, really beautiful note. And the challenge here is to actually just accepting how good things are and how we're actually getting what we wanted all along. <laughs> and to actually realize that we're getting what we wanted to actually realize that the job is done, that we can put our tools down, we can put our burdens down, we can take a vacation, we can allow others to surpass us even, right? We can allow others to surpass us, we can allow others to take up the tools, others to take up the burdens, because for now our job is done. We can find a new job later if we want, don't have to from now it's it's I feel like there, there's really like a downtime right this this pause period where we're integrating the ending of this incredible cycle and I think depending on when you see this video and just depending on your own situation this this like integration period this like kind of downtime this kind of darker period darker like not in the bad way at all I mean darker in terms of like it's nighttime or it's winter <laughs> right that period could last even a couple of years, okay? The period could last a couple of years. It could also last like two seconds. Time is irrelevant, but I just wanted to, I'm, I'm, and I'm saying two years because I do see this, especially for those of us who are seeing this uh, when I post it. Um, you know, Saturn is in Pisces. Saturn has just moved into Pisces like a couple of weeks ago or whatever it was. And that, that represents you know, ast astrologically speaking, that is a representation of this type of ending of a cycle. And Saturn is going to be in Pisces for about two and a half years. So for some of us, this type of um, quiet period of integrating this ending could go could go for the entire Saturn in Pisces. That that just means that you know, life might be quieter, less exciting. There might be less happening. You might see other people. Um, kind of leapfrogging past you you might see other people having like these big moments of success and you might find that you're not really doing anything but you're also kind of okay with that right? you're not really doing anything but you're also just okay with that just know that it's just the lull right it's like you're at the bottom of the slide and okay it's like being at a water slide park you, you just you just finished riding the slide down you splashed down into the bottom of the pool and now you're swimming around in the pool for like a little bit before you climb up the ladder to go down the slide again. That's what this is, right? That's what this is. <laughs> yeah, and that whole time the, the card that was waiting to be drawn was this woman holding a coin. This would be like the queen of pentacles, I think, in the tarot. So <laughs> this, I actually take this, it, what's that expression? It, you can rest on your laurels, right? You can rest on your laurels for a bit now if you would like. Um, and you can allow like the manifestations to come in, right? The seeds have been planted and the seeds have gestated. The seeds have grown, the seed, the, 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 the trees have grown, the fruit has blossomed, right? And the fruit is now just about to start falling off the tree into your outstretched hands, right? Imagine that years and years and years ago, you planted 
an orange seed and the, the orange seed grew into a sapling. I don't know how long it takes for an orange seed to turn into a fruit bearing orange tree, but I imagine it must be many years, right? Finally, 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 just outstretch your hands and allow the oranges to start dropping into your hands <laughs> and you can sit back like royalty, right? You can sit back like royalty and reap the fruits of your harvest, right? Reap, like reap the fruits of your labor. You can enjoy your harvest for as long as you want to before you decide to start the new, the next upward journey, right? I'm going to call this one quits right there, guys. Sending you so much love and light. I'll talk to you later. Bye.